Welcome to the official tennis.com podcast featuring professional coach and community leader, Kamal Murray. All right, welcome to the tennis.com podcast. I am your host, Kamal Murray, and we are here with somebody we have all missed on tour. She's gonna tell us all about like normal life as like a normal citizen, walking around, going to dinner, not having to pack a suitcase. Luisa Chirico. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Excited, excited to be back and excited to be here on this podcast. <laughs> so how does it feel? Well, first of all, three years ago, I wasn't doing a podcast. You're like, yeah, it's like kind of weird yeah. seeing you right here, right, with these microphones. <laughs> but how does it feel being back at a tournament with like, you missed the whole like drag of playing tennis during COVID with no fans. Yeah. Now you're like coming back when it's like all getting good. You haven't like earned your stripes. Yeah. And even earn the right to play in front of a crowd. With fans again. Because you like totally were gone when it was like depressing and you were trapped in the hotel. Yeah, I I know. Um, I actually played the U.S. Open last year in Qualies and there were no fans in Qualies, so that was a little bit weird to just have like. I think I played on a pretty decently big court too, so it was like just my mom and my coach and like the other girl's mom and her coach, and that was it. It was a little bit weird, but. I mean, it's so awesome to be back with fans, and um, I mean, this tournament is a great one always. The fans get really into it. Like today, I had so much fun out there, and uh, yeah, so I'm just really excited to be back. So you were like getting hot, right? 2016, 2015, quarters of City Open, only to lose to the eventual winner. Then 2016, you were like getting hot, and then like the injury hits. Mm -hmm. So when I think about like your career, I think you've always kind of been hot. Like when you were playing juniors, a lot of the colleges were recruiting you mm -hmm. because I thought they, they thought there was a chance you would actually go to college, right? I always find it interesting. Like, so Tommy yeah. Paul told me North Carolina was recruiting him, but wouldn't give him a full scholarship. They offered like 50%. Okay. And now he's like Tommy Paul, right? Yeah. So what schools were like recruiting you, hoping that you'd go to college? Um, I was looking primarily at Stanford. Um, Cause you're smart, I forgot. I know. <laughs> Lily was recruiting me pretty hard. I, I mean, I was speaking to other coaches, like I was talking to Duke and UNC a little bit, UCLA, but um, I knew that if I went to college, I think, I waited until the very end to decide to really pull the trigger and turn pro, but I, uh, yeah, I was mainly talking to Stanford at the end. So what made you like, you know, go left instead of right, right? What made, what, was there like a particular win or you were kind of like, yeah, I really don't want to study. You know what I mean? No. Like, what made you decide to go pro? <laughs> yeah, um, I think I had given myself a ranking goal that I was in, if I was in the top, I think 150 it was, that I would give myself the chance to turn pro. And I, and I was at that time, so yeah, I turned pro. Like, mom, I'm and 49, my, yeah. I don't want to go to school. My parents, it took some convincing, for sure. They were, my mom went to Stanford, so she was pretty bummed that I wasn't going there. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I, no regrets, I made the right decision. I'm, I'm extremely happy to be on tour. So you have like an interesting background. You talked about your mom, like you're half Korean, mm -hmm. half white. And I'm always curious as to how people from cold weather climates find tennis. Like I found tennis because it was like convenient babysitting. Like it was an indoor facility around my school. And my mom was like, well, you have three other siblings. You can walk there and I have to pick you up at seven o'clock. So good luck. Yeah. How'd you get into tennis? Which one of your parents? Um, my mom played tennis a little bit like in high school and just recreationally. She actually still plays now. Huh? Um, she's pretty, she's very competitive. She's into it. She plays all the women's leagues and stuff. Like 3.5 or no, like no, 4.5? Like, she's like 5.0. Like she's good. Oh, so she could like yeah. she, critique she her matches. her way through. Yeah. Yep. I've had my fair share of car rides back from tournaments with my mom telling me everything that I did wrong. <laughs> Um, so my dad didn't really know anything about tennis, but he played a bunch of other sports and I actually played, I mean, I played soccer, basketball, tennis. Growing up, I just, I played everything. My parents kind of put me in everything and tennis was the one that stuck. Um, so I think my mom put me in a clinic one day at, a, at the club where she would do her, her clinics and I just loved it and I asked to go back and start doing lessons and um, yeah, so I got pretty into it pretty quickly. <laughs> Oh, she had the easy road. Cause normally yeah. it's like, they made me do it for a little while no. and then I fell in love. Like no. one time and you were hooked. Yeah, I was pretty, I, yeah. I mean, I loved all sports. I played soccer pretty seriously until I was like 14 too. So um, had to make that choice, I think as every kid does that plays a lot of sports. But um, yeah, I was about 14 when I focused exclusively on tennis. <laughs> so tell me about the car rides because you know, I coach a lot of kids as well, right? And so I always tell the parent, mm -hmm. we had a great practice. Yeah. 
um, let me be the bad guy, don't undo what I did in, on this hour-long car ride, yeah. right? Um, and let me be the bad guy, you be the parent. So tell me about some of those car rides because like neither one of my parents played tennis. Mm -hmm. My mom still to this day has never seen me hit a tennis ball. Really? So I didn't get like the whole crazy tennis parent thing. Yeah. But as a coach, I'm always like, that poor kid has got to ride home with their dad. <laughs> and it's going to like, you missed five forehands or you were up 40 love and you choked, that kind of thing. So tell me about the car rides with your mom. Um, I mean, I joke, but I'm pretty lucky. My parents are both very, very supportive and they're not, they're not crazy tennis parents in any, in any way. I mean, my mom is very competitive and I think she loves to watch tennis, so she loves to come watch me. And of course, it's more fun when I'm winning than losing. But um, uh, my dad has never even like played tennis once in his life. He's just, he just loves to watch all sports. So he's just been um, thrilled that I'm now a professional athlete. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I mean, I got really lucky. My parents are really supportive. They're still very supportive. My mom's here this week with me. Um, so I, I uh, but I've definitely had my fair share of like a bad loss and then driving home and my mom telling me, you know, should have done this, should have done this. But I think that's just normal. <laughs> Did you get your phone taken away? Um, no, but I was pretty, I was pretty chill on court. I think if I ever like, you know, through a tantrum or something like that, my dad would get really mad at me. So I, I, I was never like bad on court like that. I didn't throw my racket or anything like that. But uh, <laughs> I think I would have got my phone taken away if I had, had done that. <laughs> yeah. So during COVID, right? So you got injured like, you know, years ago, but you kind of like didn't really miss much because you had like two years almost where there were no fans, um, points were like holding, they were like taking points off like one every 52 weeks. Yeah. Um, tell me what normal life was like, having been a tennis player, probably missed prom, and missed them tons of parties, tons of birthdays, and then you like fully committed to tennis, then you have like this three year period mm -hmm. where you get to enter the real world. Tell me how that was. It was, it was a little bit strange. I mean, I got injured and uh, I mean, I couldn't play at all at the end of 2019, I think for like a good six months, even before COVID or anything. Um, and so I was just doing like physical therapy. I mean, as you know, like physical therapy, I was doing fitness. Um, I was trying to hit every couple days, just go out for an hour, 30 minutes, something like that. But with my shoulder- ball, like with the red balls? Just like balls. mini tennis even, like my shoulder was just not having it at that point. So I took a good like six months off where I didn't pick up a racket and I just let it heal. Um, did a lot of physical therapy. I didn't have surgery, almost was at that point, but then um, started kind of getting better on its own and I've been lucky with that. But um, yeah, I mean, got to live kind of a normal life for a little bit, which is different. Something I feel like I haven't done since I was like 15, right? <laughs> um, but I definitely missed it. I mean, I missed it after like one month, if I'm being honest. Like I was ready to get back. Yeah, I know. So what did you do to stay close to the game? Obviously you gotta do physical therapy. You gotta like keep your fitness to get ready. But you see like people like, get injured and they go commentate, or they get injured yeah. and they go like volunteer with kids. What did you do to stay close to the game? Um, or did you watch tennis? Cause you know, a lot of people don't watch tennis yeah. who actually play tennis. Yeah, I watch, a, I wouldn't say I watch like a ton of tennis. Like I'm not every day watching, but um, I do enjoy watching. So I was during that period of course watching, but it's, all, it's also weird when you're injured to watch cause you're a little bit like, I mean, I was a little bit antsy to get back out there. So it was almost, you know, frustrating to not be able to play, um, but yeah, I enjoyed watching tennis. I also tried to, you know, I spent the time when I was injured at home. So I tried to catch up with friends and like spend a lot of time with my family, stuff that like I wouldn't normally get to do um, just being on the road so much. So I tried to like make the most of the time I had at home too. So that was kind of my take. <laughs> you didn't like enroll in online school. Like people were like, oh, oh. You know what? I'm injured. I'm gonna go get a degree now. Well, I actually am. I am on, uh, studying online anyway. Before I got injured, I was doing that anyway. So I, I ramped up my schoolwork, that's for sure. Instead of like two or three courses at a time, I was taking like four, five. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but yeah, now I'm back to like one or two while I'm traveling. Because it's, it's hard when you're traveling. There's not a lot of downtime. <laughs> it, it's so funny because people say, oh, you don't do anything. You got one hour of practice, two hours of practice, and you watch a match, and you go, I'm like, no, it's like a process. Yeah. Like, you got to get there, you got to stretch, day. warm up, yeah. scout. It's like a day. It's not. I'm like so. Like my family gives me a hard time. I'm like, oh yeah, you're out of town and I'm here with the kids. I'm like, eh, 
it's not that easy. Yeah, it's not like a vacation, right? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, while you're away, I'm sure you saw people that you were playing who were like kind of like playing and rising. Like I know you look at like people look at like you know Sviantek now. Like yeah. I like just beat her in juniors, and now she's number one in the world. Who were you watching that had the opportunity to obviously continue to play without any injury interruptions? You're like. Damn, I used to always beat that. You know, that I should um, be where they are. I don't know if it was like a, I should be where they are. I think, I mean, I'm competitive, but I think it's like a healthy competitive where yeah. I was watching people that I knew um, do well and people that I had beaten or, or been close with. Um, so it was kind of motivating almost to see like the people doing well and um, just that, you know, when I get back, it was like more motivating to that I could get to that level too and get my game back. Um, and so I'm still working at it. I mean, I've been playing almost not even a full year since my injury yet, but uh, my goal is to play a full season this year. So slowly but surely working back. I mean, I'm just grateful to be here, honestly. Like my shoulder's been good, knock on wood. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> like every little twinge of pain, you're like getting nervous. Like, oh my God, I'm just, was I injured again? Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to be smart with it and not schedule myself, spread myself too thin, but um, at the same time, play as much as I can. Yeah. So life on tour has changed since you've been gone. There was no, Bubbles, Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. There was no Uber Eats when you were like there, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're back into the mix now. How are you a So are you like dropping your bags, looking for your favorite type of food, or are you like, yeah, I just want to like rest and Uber Eat? What, what's your routine like uh, now versus before? I like to go out to dinner on the road. I think it's like spending too much time in your hotel or Airbnb or wherever you are can get like kind of boring and a little bit isolating. So I like to go out and you know, have dinner with other players or my coach, my mom is here this week. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, the beauty of what we do is like we know people everywhere. I feel like I go, you know, I was just in LA for a couple tournaments and I had friends out there that I stay with and it's just, um, I'm lucky that I know people kind of all over the world, all over the country at least. And uh, so I try and like be as social as I can, but at the same time, not tire myself out. <laughs> So what place are you looking, most looking forward to getting back to? Um, like city, right? Tournament, venue. And then what place are you like, oh, I got to play a 25 and a, and a 50 and a 125 and I really want to go to this place. Um, I would say I'm most excited to go back, hopefully to Paris this year or Wimbledon because I didn't play Wimbledon last year. And uh, it's been a, several years since I've been back out there on the grass have not stepped foot on a grass court in a while, so it'll be interesting, but um, yeah, that would be my goal. And then, I don't know if there's anywhere that I'm not looking forward to playing. I mean, like I said, I'm just, <laughs> if my shoulder's good and I'm in the draw, I, I'll be happy, honestly. <laughs> well, the tour is happy to have you back. You give such good answers, you're so polite. It's like, okay, give, give me a city you wanna oh, go. Um, no, honestly, I can't even think of one right now. Like I, I was playing a bunch of 25s when I started out again because my, without my protected ranking and stuff, and um, like it's just great to be back at a tournament. Honestly, <laughs> I can't lie. So grateful, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're great. We're grateful to have you back on tour. Your smile is infectious. Everyone's can't wait to see it. We want to wish you a lot of luck, and I thank you for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. Thanks again. <laughs>